Hello there, friend. Welcome back to Sorry What. Make sure you're comfortable with a cup of your favorite drink and let us begin today's story. Claire, the ducking witch, the cheating ducking witch. She won't get away with it this time. I was angry, angrier at myself for being a gullible fool and believing everybody else. What I needed was proof, she's not getting half of the house, that was mine. I met Claire at university, I was doing electrical engineering and aeronautics, she was doing psychology and social sciences. We met at a party, I was feeling a bit down and a bit guilty. My nan had just died, and I just got back from the funeral. I hadn't visited her much over the last couple of years. The busy life of a young university student. But she left me her house and her will. Mum and dad didn't need it. It wasn't a big house, but big enough for a family of four. I have some lovely memories of that house, of my nan and granddad before he passed on. Dad was an aeronautical engineer. Mum was a deputy manager in a bank, I would make more use of the house. When I was a youngster I used to visit the house a lot to be with my nan. She was lonely after Granite died, so I would pop around to keep her company, and as I got older, I'd do jobs for her. Whilst I played with my mates I always found some time for my nan. I went round to look at the house after the funeral, and she still had the Airfix bullfighter kit I made 15 years ago, it was my first model aeroplane. It was still there. I felt guilty about not visiting her more often, there was nothing I could do about it now, but it still made me feel sad and ashamed. Claire and I had seen each other around campus. She was cute, and we were on nodding and smiling terms. We were at a party and she noticed I was a bit down. She tried to cheer me up. It worked. She made me more cheerful, well less sad anyway. I thanked her the following day by taking her out for a pint which turned into dinner. Okay it was only fish and chips. Within six weeks we were in bed together. It was good. We were both at university and I had dipped my wick several times, and I'm sure she had been the recipient of some wick dipping, but we never talked about it. I woke up one morning in my bed to see her resting up on one elbow looking down at me. She smiled and kissed me on the cheek, got out of bed saying. I'll put the kettle on for some tea. She put on one of my dress shirts that was laying on the end of the bed. Was that love in her eyes? I was starting to have feelings for her. There could be no pissing around with this. I would have to ask her. I went downstairs, I was famished after last night's excursions. I made a bacon buddy for her, bacon and egg for me. She sat across the table from me. She was looking far away into the distance, she was gone with the fairies. I reached a hand across to her, she looked at me and smiled. I said to her now, she was back with us sweetheart, I have something to tell you. I'm starting to have serious feelings for you. She jumped up, ran around the table and straddled me. That was a tad uncomfortable because she had no knickers on. I was not hard, but not soft either. She grabbed my face with both her hands and kissed me deeply. Thank God for that, I love you too, I was just working out how to tell you without scaring you off. I don't think I mentioned the word love, but I let it go. Does that mean we're exclusive now? I asked about being aware of both of our backgrounds. I've been exclusive since we met at that party. I couldn't say the same thing, but I had been since the first time we made love. Within two weeks she had moved into my small bedsit. We had to force ourselves to study. Living with her, being with her, I fell deeply, madly in love with her. The future was a bit of a problem. I had a job lined up in my hometown with the company my dad worked for, and I had Nan's old house and somewhere to live. Claire's hometown was 70 miles away. She moved back to her parents and very quickly got a job in a large insurance company that had offices all over the country. We spent alternate weekends driving up and down the M4. I'm sure I got to know every pothole. Then things came together. The deputy manager of her company in my town was retiring, and her company, knowing of our attachment, offered her an interview for the job. She did well and was offered the post, she accepted. So, Claire will be moving up to my hometown in about three months. That was ideal because I had asked her to marry me, and a May wedding was on the cards of our local church. It had a lot of cherry trees, and the blossoms would look fantastic, like natural confetti. Things were looking rosy until I caught her. It was Claire's birthday on the Friday I was due to travel to her. I took a day's leave and traveled down on Thursday night to surprise her. I even picked up a dozen roses. I got to her flat. Her car was in its usual parking space, but there were no lights on in the flat. I let myself in and it was obvious she wasn't there. Perhaps she popped out to the shops or something. I found a vase and put the roses in some water. I made a cup of tea. After about half an hour there was no sign of Claire, so I tracked her on her phone. She was in the pub round the corner. We didn't use that one much, it was too full of young people making too much noise. I had thought of phoning her, but then there would be no surprise. I made my way around to the pub. It was quite noisy. I looked around. I couldn't see her, then a flash of white attracted my eye. There she was, she had her arms round the neck off a man who looked a bit familiar. 
His right hand was round her waist, the flash of white was a bandage on his hand, and they were kissing deeply like she kissed me. I was gutted. I got my phone out and lifted it up. I took a couple of pictures. The girl standing next to the bar saw me do it and rushed across to Claire. I didn't wait, I turned around and went outside. I started walking back to Claire's flat. I had to pack. I sent her a copy of the picture I had just taken, and a text message read, I'll move my stuff out so you could move his in. You know where to send the engagement ring. I got back to her flat. I didn't have any suitcases, so I got a black plastic bin bag and started putting my clothes in. I had just got to the bathroom taking my stuff out of there when Claire came hurtling in, followed by the bloke she was with. Oh this will be interesting. Sweetheart it's not what it looks like. It was just a kiss. We were just kissing. Nothing's happened. Please, it was just a kiss, forgive me. Duck off, and then duck off some more. You stand there saying nothing's happened and you bring him here to rub my ducking face into it. No we're done, who else knows you're carrying on behind my back. I saw that girl rush across to you so she must know you're doing something wrong. I'm out of here. It was just a kiss, nothing else. A kiss with both your arms around his neck. I know where kisses lead, remember? Have you ducked him already? No, I wouldn't do that to you. She looked at me in the eyes. Blue jobs then. You good at those, have you been practicing on him for me? I couldn't keep the sarcasm out of my voice. No, my sweetheart, I wouldn't do that. Still looking at me in the eyes. Then I saw his hand. So just a hand job then. Her eyes flicked this time, a typical giveaway, having psychology training she must have caught herself. It was too late. She said nothing. Right, so just a hand job because his hand is knackered. And you caused the damage I'm guessing. Right. She nodded her head slowly. So, hand job today, blue job next week and ducking the week after. That's how it goes if I remember, and if you hadn't noticed he's got a left hand. It would be good practice for him to learn to be ambidextrous. I suppose he won't have to learn to wink with his left hand now. He'll have you won't he? I started to make my way towards the door. Then he spoke up. Sorry man nothing has happened, trust me. It was just a kiss, just a friend's kiss. She was making up for this. He held his hand up with a bandage on. She trapped it in a door the other week and broke some bones, she was just apologizing. You don't apologize to somebody by swapping spit and tongues like I saw, and how many times did she get you off? There's more going on here, and I don't know you, so no I don't trust you. Then he did something strange. He got his phone out, unlocked it and gave it to me. Just once, I was desperate. Look dude there's my phone it's completely open. Look through anything, texts, emails, Instagram, Twitter, you won't see me contacting her at all. There are a couple of messages on there about work, she works for me, but look at them. I did, there was nothing incriminating, no sexy messages, just an apology from her and some work stuff. They had met up a couple of times, but it seems to be with people from work, not alone. But I still didn't like the kiss, and why hadn't she told me she trapped some bloke's hand in a door? I looked at her. Will you extend me the same courtesy, give me your phone, let me see what's on your phone. She handed it over without a murmur, I knew her passcode the same as she knew mine. I thought we had no secrets. I turned my back on them. I checked all the messages, emails and social media, and apart from the odd thing that replicated what I'd seen on his phone there was nothing, but she went this man off, that was a deal breaker for me. Then I did something sneaky. I changed the passcode on her phone, I phoned myself from her phone. My phone rang. I took it out of my pocket, accepted the call, turned the volume right down. I placed her phone on the table. I looked at the pair of them. I was starting to believe that nothing had happened apart from the hand job, but I wasn't hanging around. I need to think about this. Give me that engagement ring. I will keep it for two weeks, and that will give me time to decide if it comes back to your finger or the jeweler's. She pulled the ring off her finger and gave it to me with tears in her eyes. Now get out of my ducking way. I left. As soon as I got outside, I turned the volume of my phone up so I could hear what they were saying. I'm sorry Claire. I heard him say. I didn't mean to mess things up for you. I like you. I wouldn't want to hurt you. But when I told you I had problems doing stuff and you offered to help. I thought you were joking about a hand job. If I realized you were serious, or I wouldn't have accepted it. I was only joking you Pratt, couldn't you see that? But once you accepted. I was stuck. I had to go through with it. Okay, but that doesn't explain the kiss that Michael saw. Why did you do that? I don't know why, the urge just came over me, it was a stupid thing to do and in the pub, everybody saw us. If Shelly hadn't seen Michael take the photograph and warn me, I would never have known to look at my phone. It's too bloody loud in there you can't hear anything. Who knows, we might have got carried away, because to be honest with you, Claire, if you'd offered me a blue job or anything more, I would have taken it, you're beautiful. 
I'd forgotten about Michael and you being engaged. He paused for a bit, but then a quiet voice I heard him say. Hey, if Michael is off the scene, could we, you know? She erupted. No duck off, get out of here, you and your ducking hand. I've ruined my marriage and I haven't even got that far yet. You ducked up my life and now you're offering to take over when Michael left off. How ducking crass of you. I don't think there's anything wrong with your hand anyway, I'll think you're swinging the lead, so duck off. I need to try and find a way to get my man back. I need to apologize to him. I need to make it up. I don't want to hear a ducking word about this at work, or your other hand will get trapped in a door. That was it, I'd heard enough. I heard the door slam and I saw him leave, then all I could hear was Claire's crying. I hung up. So nothing had happened, but I had the feeling that it might have happened later. The big problem was that I was still madly deeply in love with her. Could I forgive her, would the kiss have led to more? He implied it would, although Claire shot him down. I didn't know what to do. I might have to ask for somebody else's advice. Mum and dad would be good at that. I didn't realize I'd been driving and I was halfway home. I pulled into a motorway service station and phoned mum and dad and told them what happened. I told them the wedding was off. We hadn't paid too much, it was still a fair few months away. They asked me to pop around for tea the following day, and we could talk about it, but not to forget to tell Claire's mum and dad. They were nice people. That's not the thing you do over a text, so the next thing I did was to phone them. They were too far away to visit as I was now halfway home. They were shocked, they didn't believe me until I sent them a copy of the photograph. Her dad asked me to think about it before I did anything stupid. I told him I was cancelling the wedding whilst I thought about it. I told him that to see her in the arms of another man broke my heart, and forgiveness would be a long time coming. Her mom said she would give her a phone call and rip her a new one. I told them they might have a problem getting through to her on the phone. And I left it there. I got home and went to bed. I slept surprisingly well probably because I was completely physically and emotionally shattered. I went to tea with mum and dad the following day. We talked through a lot of things but didn't come up with a conclusion. Dad and I drank too much, so I had to stay over in my old bed. Mum made breakfast in the morning. It was all very familiar and comforting. Dad and I went for a pint at lunchtime, and mum had the usual roast dinner when we got home. It was comfortable, but I still hadn't made a decision. I did cancel the wedding, the memory of the sight of her with her arms around his neck made it easy. I threw myself into work and decided I had things to do around the house the following weekend. Normally Claire would be coming to me this weekend. There were little jobs I put off with all the traveling, I got on with them now. Midday on Saturday my front doorbell rang. I opened it to find Claire's mum and dad stood there with Claire behind them. I invited them in, but before Claire could get in the door I closed it in her face. I left it for a few seconds and then opened it, and she stood there crying. I just wanted to let her know this wasn't going to be easy. Her mum and dad told me how sorry she was and it was a mistake and it shouldn't have happened. Claire spoke up. I'm sorry Michael, really sorry I shouldn't have done that, it was a mistake. I've told mum and dad everything, how stupid I was. Can I make it up to you? Was the kisser winking some bloke off the mistake? Her mother's face fell, so she hadn't told her about the hand job then. I looked at her father, he wasn't shocked, he knew. I went into the kitchen to give them some time together. I could hear Claire's mum's voice, she was not happy. I made some coffee for them and tea for me. I know they prefer coffee, I even had a jar of their favorite. We talked for a while getting nowhere, I told them how upset I was at seeing her with her arms around somebody else's neck, and that she had had contact with somebody else's genitals. And I wasn't sure how I was going to get over that. Then Claire did something. She got down on her knees in front of me. I'm sorry sweetheart, I was stupid. I won't make that mistake again. I will think about the ramifications of everything I do. Please forgive me. I looked down at her beautiful face. I really did love her. I'm not saying anything would have happened, but I felt she had no intentions of having sex with that man after what I heard on the phone. She was aware of the mistakes she had made, so yes probably I was going to forgive her, but the wedding wasn't back on yet. I had a few more questions. So who knows about you and this bloke carrying on? Just mom and dad, Dean and one or two of the girls in the office who were there that saw it. No one's talked about it, and I've told Dean if he mentions it or comes near me, I'll break his other ducking hand. The use of the cuss word caused a tutting from her mother. So, it looks like half the office knows you've been cluckling me. No, there's just a couple of people who know, and that's about it, and I have told you I would never do that again. They promised me they won't spread the news because I made a mistake, and anyway, I'm moving into the office down here in a month's time, so I'll be away from them. So, you're still moving down here then? Yes, I've got to even if you don't take me back, the post still needs to be filled. But I want to be here with you. Now I tease a bit. 
How could I trust you there won't be some other joke that goes too far again in the future? She gave a quizzical look at the joke word. How much did I know? That was when her dad stepped in, he'd been fairly quiet up to now, taking it all in. Listen son, my only advice is you won't know you can trust her until you try. But that is completely up to you. I'm not going to suggest to you what to do, because you will have to live with it. But I hope you can forgive her and take her back. Then Claire reached her hand out to me. I shied backwards. Is it the hand you wanked him off with, when was the last time you used it on him? She burst into tears. Her dad looked at me and said, that was a bit unfair, lad. But I can see where you're coming from. Claire seemed to pull herself together, stood up. Looked at me and said. It was just the once, I have never seen him outside work again. She stormed off into the kitchen. I followed her, so did her mum and dad. She turned the cold tap on full. She bent down, opened up the cupboard underneath the sink and pulled out the bleach bottle. She pulled the top off and poured it over her right hand front and back, waited 5 seconds, then shoved it under the running tap. She turned, looked at me and held the hand up. Completely clean, there is not one molecule of him left here. The only clock this hand will touch is yours, if you'll have me back. I thought to myself that wasn't a bad display, and I was believing her. I picked up a towel and gave it to her so she could dry her hand. I'm not saying you're forgiven yet, but you had better come down here next weekend, so we can start looking for a flat for you when you come down here. I was hoping I could move in here with you to make it up to you. But I get where you're coming from. I had already decided I was going to forgive her with the display of the bleach. She could have done herself some serious damage, but I wasn't going to make it easy on her. She did come down the following weekend. We didn't look at flats because we were too shagged out having spent a lot of time in bed. The following weekend I went to her place. I wanted to test something, so we went to that pub. There were a couple of her workmates there. Nothing was said. I kept my eyes open. There were no sly glances, no gigging behind hands, it appears everybody had kept their word. We didn't look for a flat, she did move in with me. She got the engagement ring back on her finger, and we had an autumn wedding instead of a spring one. Things went well, we settled into that cozy life of a married couple. We visited our parents, had holidays. Then we decided it was time for children before the grandparents were too old to be able to enjoy them. And to babysit for us. She came off the pill, we humped like rabbits every position we could think of. After 6 months, nothing. We went to see a clinic, we both got tested and everything was good. The clinic warned us that sometimes it can take a while, the stress of trying plus work and everything else, and not to keep doing it every 5 minutes, just let it happen naturally and it will come along. And that was what we did. We let things run their natural course. It was a busy time for both of us at work. She was busy with audits, and we were just finishing a major repair on a customer's aeroplane, and because of supply issues we were late and I was working all hours I could legally work. When not working I was eating and sleeping so the seg side had dropped off quite a bit. It always gets busy for both of us this time of the year. It was normal for us. But to top it off, Claire's dad had a heart attack, so on the one day a week I wasn't working I popped across there to help out. I was hoping in a couple of weeks time when things calmed down and the loving would start up again and it would happen. That was until I changed a razor blade. I normally don't bother putting the old one in the receptacle, I just drop it straight in the bin. I put my foot on the pedal, the lid came up, I clicked the old cartridge off, and it missed the bin. As I bent down to pick it up off the floor I noticed a small end cap off a cardboard box. I recognized it. It was a pregnancy kit. I looked through the rest of the bin to find the rest of the box and the stick thingy. They weren't there. I finished my shave and went downstairs. Claire hadn't left for work yet. She was sitting at the kitchen table drinking her coffee. I placed the end cap in front of her and said. Where is the rest of this? Oh, I threw it away. Why didn't you tell me about it? It was negative again and I didn't want to upset you. Now my next question, which was a biggie. Why are you taking a pregnancy test? We've only had sex twice in a month, why would you be pregnant? That pulled her up short. She spluttered and coughed. With that she stood up and said. I'm late for work. She rushed out the door. She wasn't late at all. Now I was worried. Was this a repeat of Dean and it went further? I thought back, had there been any change in her dress, her manner, attitude, anything like that? I couldn't think of anything, but we've both been so busy we hardly had time to think, and with Claire's dad being unwell. I was over there a lot doing things for them when I could fit it in. I couldn't think of any telltale signs. But I would look closer now. Claire came in that evening and was all apologetic saying that I had called her out, and she hadn't seen it from my point of view. She took the pregnancy test hoping the last two had worked, but they hadn't, she was disappointed and didn't want to tell me. She suggested we could go away this weekend so she could make it up to me. 
just the two of us in this small cottage. She promised she'd wear nothing but stockings and her six-inch heels all weekend and any other underwear I decided to take. I told her it sounded like a good idea, but doesn't her period start this weekend? She came across and kissed me and said, thank you sweetheart, I'd forgotten that. We'll make it the weekend after. I would hate to spoil your weekend. Then it struck me, if her period was due to start in a day or two, why take a pregnancy test? That wasn't right, and women don't forget when their period is. Her period did start. But now I was looking for things out of the ordinary. It seemed a bit strange she didn't seem to use as many tampons as she normally did, and she is normally discreet about them. This time she left the box out in the open. The weekend away was fantastic. She did wear nothing but stockings, six inch heels and satin nightdress all weekend. I enjoyed it to the hilt. Now I was looking for stuff and I still didn't see anything, no change of attitude, or the way she dressed. Probably more sex once her period was over, but that may have been because of the discussions we had about not making love often enough. No girls nights out, no working later than normal, but I was still wary. We got back to normal, but I was still keeping an eye on stuff. Once a month the people from her office would have a happy hour on a Friday, not late, just a pint or two in the local Weatherspoons. My finishing work normally coincided with when she wanted to come home after a drink or two, so I would call around and pick her up. This Friday though I got knocked off early. So I was going to be earlier than normal. I tried to phone her, but she went to answer phone. It was probably too loud in the pub. I got there and I saw her workmate sitting around a table. Claire wasn't with them, nor was Jeremy her boss. I asked the girls around the table where Claire was and was told she was in the ladies. I also asked where Jeremy was. He was normally here for these gatherings. He was outside having a vape. Sarah, one of the girls, immediately picked up her phone and started texting. A short while later Claire came back in from outside, not from the toilet. Just after that Jeremy came in through the front door. There was access from the smoking area to the front door. Claire came up and gave me a kiss. That was when I smelled the faint smell of scented smoke. So she wasn't in the toilet. I wasn't standing for this. I said in a voice so they would all hear me. If I catch you cheating on me, I will divorce you and you will have nothing. Looking at Jeremy I said. And the person shagging her will regret the day they were born. With that I turned and started to walk out. Claire caught hold of me before I had gone a step and I turned round. This would be interesting. Don't embarrass me like that in front of my workmates. Then don't get your friends to lie to me, they told me you're in the toilet, you were outside in the vaping area with Dean. I could smell it on you, and I bet the pregnancy test was to make sure he hadn't got you pregnant. So you do any embarrassment that comes your way. I looked at them sitting around the table, they realized they'd been caught lying, Sarah looked deeply into her glass. I walked away. Claire caught me up, this time beside me, she slipped her arm in mine, I'm sorry sweetheart nothing is happening, please trust me. I think she missed that I had used the name Dean, not Jeremy. Booker that was a waste of an insulting reminder. As we walked out the pub I said to her. I trusted you once and I forgave you, that will not happen a second time. It was a chilly ride home, and she spent the weekend making it up to me. I kept an eye on her phone, there was nothing. If she was having it off with Jeremy, they were being very discreet about it. I had a look on her company's website. It detailed what they expected of their employees, and yes, there was a non-fraternization policy especially between seniors and subordinates, and strangely enough it included anybody who knew about the fraternization. That was a new one on me, but there again I didn't look at this sort of stuff all the time. Now I was being more wary. But if they were carrying on, they were now warned and would expect me to be checking up on them, I would have to play it a bit careful. I still saw nothing out of the ordinary. I did some digging around about him. He was married with two kids. His wife was a bit on the plain side and a bit dumpy. I'd never met her. I'm sure she has a lovely character. I might have to make her acquaintance. Then came the announcement of a course, it was three days in Telford where her company had their headquarters. I asked who was going. It was just her and one of the other girls, Kelly. So, not Jeremy then? I asked. No, he did it last year. I didn't trust her, but even after digging around on the internet and the discreet questions there was nothing to say he was going with her. She was due to leave on Sunday afternoon. She had told me Kelly was picking her up. Kelly pulled up at the front door in her car. I had taken to putting my phone in my top pocket sometimes with the lens facing outwards. This was one of those times. I set it to record video. I took Claire's suitcase out for her. I asked Kelly if I could put it into the boot. She looked a bit flustered but unlocked it anyway. There were no other suitcases in the boot and there was nothing on the back seat. I opened the door for Claire. After she got in, I squatted down and said to her. If you cheat on me, I will know, and I'll destroy you and him, so be warned. Kelly gave it all away, she was embarrassed and looked into her lap, and her face went bright red. 
I looked at Kelly and said, You're not taking a lot of clothes then, are you? I forgot to put them in and we're going back to my place to pick them up now. But she couldn't look me in the eye. I spent the rest of the evening preparing for the worst. I had previously contacted their head office and found out which hotel they had booked. I told them I wanted to surprise my wife with some flowers to celebrate an anniversary. They told me the hotel they were in. Claire told me she didn't know which hotel as Kelly was driving. Again, strange. On Monday I discreetly headed past her office in Kelly's car in the car park, and she was sitting at her desk and not in Telford. The phone camera came in useful again. It wasn't the best picture, but it was obviously her. I didn't let myself be seen. I had already taken three days leave, my bags were packed, and I had visited a lawyer. I made a phone call to Jeremy's wife, Heather, just to confirm that he wasn't here. I pretended I was from their company and couldn't get him in the office. She told me he was on a course in Telford. I had met Heather a few weeks before. I just happened to bump into her when she was picking the children up from school. She did have a nice character, but not observant. She missed the fact that I had no children to collect. I let her know that my wife and her husband worked in the same office. What a coincidence. I happened to mention the course and it appears Jeremy was going away at the same time. A bit strange for the head and the deputy head of the department to both go away at the same time, unless somebody had wangled something. Well, I didn't actually bump into her, I made a conscious effort to meet her. She was a nice lady, plain looking, but nice. I saw that the children were in an expensive private school. Not something they could afford on Jeremy's wage. Looking at how she was dressed, I guess she had money. And you don't normally use an Aston Martin DPX SUV to pick the children up from school. I booked into the hotel and sat in the foyer. I had dressed in something completely different from what I normally wear. I was wearing a baseball cap, I hate wearing hats indoors. Claire knows that. I saw them arrive Monday evening after the course had finished for the day. There were about 20 of them, sitting around four tables at dinner. Jeremy and Claire did not sit on the same one. I watched them for the rest of the evening, they stayed away from each other. Which was extraordinary, two people working from the same office would have at least some contact throughout the evening. They had none, it was as if they were actively distancing themselves from each other. However, they would be stupid to do it in the open, so if they were going to do it, it would have to be discreetly. I didn't know if it would be in his or her room. There were only three floors. It was about 9.15 when Jeremy left. Fortunately, the staircase was next to the lift. I ran up and found he came out on the second floor. I couldn't see which room exactly he went into, but it was one down the far end of the corridor. Back down the stairs to see when Claire left the gathering. She gave it 20 minutes or so and I ran up the staircase again. Bugger, she was on the third floor and very close to the lift. She was only in her room for a couple of minutes when she came out and headed towards the lift, but I had a nasty feeling she was going to use the stairs. I ran down them as quietly as I could. She wouldn't want to be caught using the lift. I saw her exit onto the second floor and walk down the corridor. It appeared to be the same room that Jeremy had gone into. I managed to get down the corridor to see which room it was, 214. Now the hard part. I had decided to wait an hour before knocking on the door, and hope I found them around a laptop discussing work. No, let's give them 45 minutes. I said to myself, I actually made 35 before I walked towards the room. I had set the video to record on my phone, I put it in my top shirt pocket looking out. I made sure the lens was clear of my pocket. I pushed the envelope I had prepared earlier under the door, knocked on it and shouted. Room service there was a muttering which sounded like didn't order room service. A few minutes later all I heard was Oduk when he saw the pictures of him kissing and groping my wife. I had no proof. It was a photoshop fake. It was a picture of Claire kissing Dean with Jeremy's face photoshopped over Dean's, it wasn't a good job, but it didn't need to be. It also had the unsigned divorce petition for Claire in it. The door flew open and Jeremy with a towel wrapped around his waist, saw his lover's husband standing there, he took a swing at me, it contacted my left cheek, it was a bit wimpy. Mine wasn't, the anger came out. I punched him square on the nose, hard. He collapsed. Blood went everywhere. I walked past him and up to my wife, she was still in the bed, she had dragged the bed clothes up around her. I gave her the envelope with the signed divorce petition in it and said. Don't bother coming home, I've changed the locks, and all your clothes are at your parents house. They are not happy with you. Actually, they didn't know, but they would soon, and they would still not be happy with her. I turned and walked away. I went to my room and packed my bag. I had a look in the mirror. I had quite a shiner on my left eye now. Good, I couldn't have planned that better. I made my way to reception via the bar. I spotted a gentleman who had arrived with the crowd from the course. He had the look of management about him. I said to him, do you know Jeremy? Yes, I do, why do you ask? 
Well, he and Claire may be a bit late tomorrow. If they turn up at all, it appears there's been a bit of an altercation. He glanced at my eye. What, between Claire and Jeremy? No, between Jeremy and Claire's husband. That's me, by the way. The gentleman said. I don't believe you. They wouldn't be that stupid. I took my phone out and played in the clip of Jeremy opening the door in a towel, striking me, then his nose getting squashed and Claire in his bed. I also managed to catch the room number on my video. He muttered to himself for a bit. He reached into his pocket and took out a business card. Can you send a copy of that to this address please? May I have your phone number so I can phone you tomorrow morning? This is quite serious. He gave me another of his business cards and I wrote my number on the back. It had all gone very quiet in the bar behind him. I'm sure the course will be very interesting tomorrow morning. I went to reception and booked out. It was strange to book out at 10.30 at night. The receptionist asked me if everything was alright. I told him no I had just found my wife in her boss's bed and that he had struck me. With that I purposely looked at the security camera. I drove all the way home in one go, I was angry. Angry at myself, angry at her and Jeremy. I did try stopping to have a nap and a lay-by, but sleep wouldn't come so I carried on driving. I hadn't changed the locks, but I had a locksmith on standby. I sent him a text and told him to fit me in as soon as he could. Daylight was coming up when I got home. I had already packed her clothes into black bin liners. I had done it as neatly as I could because I was hoping I would be able to unpack them and put them back where they belonged before she got back. I put the plastic bin liners containing her clothes in the back of my car. I tracked Claire's phone, she was halfway down the M5. With all the traffic it would be a couple of hours before she got here yet. I wondered where Jeremy was. But not for long, I didn't care. I wanted to drop her clothes off at her parents' place, but that would be unfair on them. Her dad was still recovering from his heart attack. I didn't want to give him another one. I drove to Claire's office intending to leave them outside. But the cleaners were in there so I left them on the floor in front of her desk. That will give them something to talk about when the office staff get in. I got back home and as I didn't expect the locksmith to be here for at least a day or two. I went indoors, put my key in the door and turned it so Claire would not be able to get her key in. She was locked out. I managed a few hours of restless sleep because I was shattered. I was awakened by a bashing on the front door and shouting, it sounded like Claire. I went downstairs and looked out the window. It was her and she looked a mess. She saw me. Please sweetheart it was a mistake, it was a one-off. He promised me a promotion. He is leaving soon and he will recommend me for his job. I did it for us. That was so much bullshit I could smell it through the door. It was also a pack of lies. Bullox I shouted back at her. It doesn't matter the reason you did it, it just matters to me that you did. You betrayed my trust in you. Please let me in, I'll explain. How do you explain all the planning that had to go into this? Getting Kelly to pick you up, arranging for Jeremy to do the course a second time, sneaking around in the hotel. You had this all planned. So what else have you planned? How long has this been going on? What else has Kelly been covering up for you? We had to plan it so we didn't get caught, and it was just the one sweetheart honest, just the once. I don't believe you. How long have you been having sex with Jeremy? I tell you what, it doesn't matter, once is enough. I put the security chain on the door and opened it. She thought I was letting her in. There was no way but at least we could talk without shouting. So I suppose all the office knows about you cheating on me obviously Kelly and Sarah, so I suppose everybody else in the office knows as well. She didn't answer the question, again. Please sweetheart, I can explain all of this. The pay is much better as a manager. We will have so much more for the baby when it comes along. Okay then explain this to me. Why were you taking a pregnancy test a few days before your period started? Keeping in mind with all the running around we'd only had sex twice in a month. You were just checking if Jeremy got you pregnant. She didn't look shocked. She didn't answer or look confused. She just looked at the floor. That told me everything. I continued. I don't need any explanation, I just need you out of my life. That is twice you cheated on me and I'm ducking stupid. I was ducking stupid enough the first time it's not happening again, so sign the divorce paperwork, and we'll get this over and done with. Now she looked defeated. I'll need some clothes. Can I come and get them please? She said to me quietly. I left them at your office. The cleaners were nice enough to let me in. I closed the door in her face, I was sorry for her mum and dad really. Whilst it was fresh in my mind I went to my computer and compassed a letter detailing events from my suspicions in the pub, Kelly's part in the deception, and finding Jeremy and Claire nearly naked in the same room. I included photos and videos plus the audio I had just recorded at my front door. I sent a copy to my divorce solicitor too. I expected a fight from Claire. 
Claire did contest it, but gave in when her solicitor showed her the evidence, and I gather her mum and dad may have had some influence on her decision. She was sad. So was Kelly for helping with the trip to Telford. Her marriage hit a hard time when her husband found out why she was sacked. Sarah was reprimanded and issued a formal warning. The rest of the office got informal warnings. There would be no bonus for them this year. There will be a lot of awkward questions in some houses at bonus time. Sarah's boyfriend dumped her. The fight I wasn't expecting was from Jeremy. Heather divorced him. He contested it and tried to convince her that Claire had been lying to get him sacked so she could have his job. If he could get his marriage back, he could appeal against his sacking from the company. It went to court in front of a judge, that doesn't happen often these days. I was a witness. I described what I saw, Jeremy's wife's lawyer played the clip of Jeremy and Claire in the room. Jeremy's lawyer tried to get it ruled out as it was taken on private property. I couldn't see what difference it made to the divorce, Heather had seen it. Then it came to me. If he could get the video evidence thrown out of court, his company couldn't use it, and he could sue them for unfair dismissal. Crafty Bustard. The judge didn't agree. I was not a professional photographer. It wasn't a regular occurrence, and I was using it to gain evidence of an affair. It wasn't private property as there is nothing stopping the public walking into that hotel and walking around, therefore there was no right to privacy, and the majority of the video was taken from outside the room, especially when Jeremy hit me. Claire got called for Heather. She told the court that Jeremy convinced her that if she had sex with him, she would get his job when he left in a few months' time. She broke down and admitted she had since found out that the company plan all along was to replace Jeremy with her. She didn't have to have sex with him, the job was hers anyway, well, it had been. The court case came up after our divorce was completed. Claire ran after me as I left the court. Sweetheart, can we talk? Please. Can I just have a word? I looked at her. She was still beautiful to me, she'd lost a bit of weight around her face, probably the stress of the divorce. She was very well turned out. I started to feel sorry for her. Okay I could do with the coffee after that. I walked towards the door and she quickly caught me up and slipped her arm through mine. It did feel good, just like old times. She went and found a table, I got her coffee, myself a tea and a couple of biscuits. I sat down opposite her. She reached across the table and took my hand. I let her. She looked at me and she had tears in her eyes. Sweetheart, I'm so sorry. I should never have done that. The hint had been dropped from head office that I was going to get Jeremy's job, but nothing was confirmed, it all went quiet on that front, I thought they had changed their mind. So, I was just making sure, I thought I was doing it for us to secure our future. You did nothing wrong, and to be honest he wasn't very good. She took a sip of her coffee. Please can we try again? I will do anything. Anything at all, you could even have another woman. I will do anything to get you back. I'm so sorry. I do love you so much. Please let me make this up to you. Please give me a second chance. Tears were streaming down her face, she was gripping my hand so hard it hurt. So let me get this right. You have hoard yourself out for a job that was already yours. You were ducking him at work, he was probably getting more than I was. You didn't wear protection. So, you could have had a baby by him, that shows how much you respect me and our marriage. Just like you did with Dean. You were just thinking of yourself, you probably forgot all about me. You got your workmates to help you, to plan your little John to Telford with lover boy who was sheep in bed anyway, and heaven knows what other things they have covered up for you. And let's not forget your antics cost Kelly her job, and from what I gather, I don't think her marriage is too stable either, I think her husband's only staying because of the children, and the last I heard Sarah's boyfriend dumped her. So it wasn't just her life you ducked up, you had to drag other people down with you. I took a sip of my tea, it was sheep. Give you a second chance. I haven't forgotten your antics with Dean. So, give you a third chance. What the duck do you think? With that I stood up, picked up the Belgian chocolate chip cookie and walked out the door. I heard sobbing. I didn't look back. I have nothing but contempt for that woman. I saw Claire's mum and dad in the supermarket a couple of months later. Her dad looked much better. They let me know Claire had moved to the south coast, she got a job offer down there. They didn't say what she was doing or where she was. I think they realized I didn't care. We bid goodbye to one another. Her mum turned to me as they left and said. She had a miscarriage, it was a stress. She never saw him again, you know. She paused. She really does love you. I wanted to snort out. Yeah, that's why she went in and ducked her boss. I didn't want to hurt these two people anymore. They had enough to put up with. I did wonder if the baby was minor Jeremy's. The rumor is that Heather's brothers paid Jeremy a visit. Working was a tad difficult for him for a few months. I don't care. Me, I just carried on trying to live the best life I could. That's the end of today's story, friends.
Show some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye for now. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.